Hello, my name is Karma Connor Marroquin. I'm a registered dietitian and a retiree of the U.S. Public Health Service. It's my retirement mission to share with the world the career path that's offered in the U.S. Public Health Service because nobody ever told me. And I want anyone who is pursuing a professional degree that would qualify to apply for the U.S. Public Health Service to know about the career path and the opportunity. So today what I'm going to talk about is a little history. Don't know much about history? Well, I'm going to teach you about the U.S. Public Health Service and its origins today. The U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps has its origin in the Act for the Relief of Sick and Disabled Seamen that was signed in 1798 by President John Adams. This act led to the creation of a network of locally controlled marine hospitals supervised by civilian health care professionals. Following the Civil War, Congress formally converted the loose network of locally controlled marine hospitals into a centrally controlled marine hospital service with its headquarters in Washington, D.C. Dr. John Maynard Woodworth became the first supervising surgeon and began the initial transformation of this service into a highly disciplined cadre of disciplined professionals based on his experience in the Union Army as a surgeon. On January 4, 1889, President Grover Cleveland signed an act by the 50th U.S. Congress to authorize the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps as a uniformed service. At that time, an explosion of new knowledge and focus on the health of our nation engaged our officers in every facet of public health, including research and science to discover and cure disease, health policy reform, epidemiology, health promotion, disease prevention, and the provision of direct patient care. Since 1889, women and men of the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps have served in the front lines of our nation's public health, serving the underserved and vulnerable, eradicating disease, leading in research and fighting modern-day crises like the Ebola virus epidemic and coronavirus disease, COVID-19 pandemic. The establishment of the Commission Corps as a uniform service component of the U.S. Public Health Service, separate and distinct from the Civil Service, dates back to 1889, when President Grover Cleveland signed the Act to regulate appointments of the Marine Hospital Service of the United States. In 1930, Congress created the Federal Bureau of Prisons to promote a unified professional approach to management by centralizing administration and creating a consistent Bureau of Prison-wide system policy. This approach included statutory provision for the U.S. Public Health Service to assume control of medical care in the Bureau of Prisons. At that time, approximately 50 Public Health Service officers provided all medical and psychological care for the entire inmate population of about 13,000. In the early 2010s, the Bureau of Prison reached 220,000 inmates and 885 public health service officers. In 1941, the United States' entrance into World War II brought a multitude of new responsibilities to the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps. The President ordered the militarization of the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps and countless officers were reassigned to the armed services. These public health service officers served in combat and were detailed to the U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard, as well as to the military in Europe and the United National Relief and Rehabilitation Agency. Many of these officers gave their life serving in combat during World War II as would many more in the wars of Korea and Vietnam. A number of U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps officers were killed in action. Seven officers were awarded Purple Heart and nine were awarded the Bronze Star. Five officers were taken as prisoners of war by the Japanese and one was awarded the French Legion of Honor. However, limited documentation exists that distinguishes these reassigned officers and therefore the true cost of the war paid by the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps is unknown. The care of injured World War II soldiers further mandated rapid expansion. Congress passed the Nurse Training Act of 1943, which created a uniformed cadet nurse corps within the U.S. Public Health Service. The U.S. Cadet Nurse Corps was the first nationally recognized federal nursing school training program. The Public Health Service Act of 1944 broadened the scope 
of the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps, allowing for the commissioning of scientists, dietitians, physical therapists, and sanitarians. Physical therapists and sanitarians were later renamed health service officers and environmental health officers. So I hope this little peek into the history gives you a better understanding of the U.S. Public Health Service, its rich history, and how it translates into the work that is done today. If you like this video, please like it and share it.